All right, good evening, everybody. Sorry about the intro, not being there, but um, that's just the way that is. Folks, I'll tell you what, this is one of those days. One of those days. That's all I better say about that. This is one of those days. It is good to be able to join you this evening. I certainly hope everybody is doing well. You saturated folks on the East Coast, I hope you're doing well, too. I have um, no doubt flooding has become an issue in certain parts of the East Coast. And it's a very strange phenomenon uh, happening. With the rain that we have received, you would think it would fill up some of the natural vats underneath the crust of the earth, right? You'd think it would just refill it. Evidently, that's, uh, or, or should I say, unfortunately, that's not happening. What's happening is the ground is so dry underneath certain layers that it actually repels the water. Um, as it repels the water, it's exposed back to the top, and of course, the evaporation effect takes place. So it is not a good situation. Um, parts of the crust um, are, are just completely devoid. You know what? And, and there are certain parts of the U.S. that are losing their absorption qualities. Losing it. Some of the minerals, or let's just say there's a, uh, there's a type of effect with any soil that if you take out a certain chemical, now I'm not going to say it because it's very simple. You just have to do some research. If you take out a certain chemical, it will no longer absorb water, but it will repel water, which means it will get drier and drier out of the crust of the earth, and these sinkholes are going to be bad. So as it repels water, this thick layer of, of soil, let's call it soil material, the water just lays on top, it becomes stagnant, of course, it evaporates by the heat of the day, and uh, which goes back up into the atmosphere, and it increases the intensity of storms, right? So let me say it again, and this is part of why we're tracking um, uh, moisture in the atmosphere. <coughs> Ocean water, the dew, every single water source is actually being sucked up to the topsoil, right? Because underneath the crust of the earth, underneath the ground, is a layers is happening in so many different places for an unknown reason. A lot of the soil has become a, an actual repellent. It will not absorb water. It won't absorb water. It repels water, right? So it seems like water can come up through it, but it won't go back. And when this happens, the ground topside gets saturated, pretty good, but then the evaporation effect takes place. When that takes place, we have numerous amounts of cloud buildup in certain regions of the earth. So the system is totally, there's some type of a balancing mechanism. And in science, this is also studied, but the moisture content in the atmosphere is beginning to concentrate. It's been concentrating like this for about the last, um, I say about the last 10 years on a buildup. It's going, to come, it's going to coalesce into a point where we have one or two conditions. Number one, we're going to have a, a type of a, um, just, just an electrified, not through dryness, so to speak, but too many, uh, let's just say too, too dense of an atmosphere. It's going to cause or continue to cause uh, a lot of different pressure changes to your body. Also, the storms are going to be too intense, too intense, like super hurricanes. Can you imagine a hurricane the size of South America? And it hits halfway inland into a continent, right? We have this in conjunction with actual warming temperatures in very strange spots at the poles. I'm not speaking about global warming, right? I'm not talking about that. That's a disputed topic that neither side knows about, obviously. I'd rather talk about ET than talk about global warming, right? Anyway, this moisture content's building up. Now, in the Bible, it tells us that rain will be withheld from the earth at certain times. It also tells us about great floods, doesn't it? it tells us about there'll be, there'll be earthquakes and floods in diverse places. But it tells us about a great dryness and plagues that will sweep the face of the earth is what it tells us. It also tells us about the sun, the ever-changing environments in the sun that will affect Earth. All this is happening, and then humanity also is going to be affected, thrust into a type of madness, right? Which I believe it is caused by a change in the magnetosphere. 
and it, it will alter your emotions. Now, those of you who belong to Christ, you really don't have to worry about that if you have enough discipline. And that's why we at COT, we stress, we stress, we have an emphasis on one truly being in Christ, not by somebody else's standards, but by the truth of you. You know if you're totally in Christ or not. You don't have to turn left to right and say, am I in Christ? You don't have to do that. All right? The Bible says, examine yourselves. You know if you're in them. You know if you're not. You know what you did today. You know the conversation you had. You know what's been lacking in this day. You know the changes you need to make. And you should make them accordingly before time runs out. Because if time runs out and you have not made the changes, given the grace to make those changes, guess what? You're going to get a, you're going to get a spanking. A great correction from the Most High. Now, His correction involves death. It involves suffering. It involves wandering in the wilderness. It involves barely making it in certain places. Anything to save your soul. Most people misunderstand that. And they look at the hardships in life as though, Oh, I've been in hardships forever. No, your life has not begun yet because you're not born yet. You're not born into eternity. Once you're born into eternity, that's going to be the first day of the rest of your days in eternity. Right? A lifespan so long, you, you just call it eternity. You're in the womb right now. You're not born. You're not born, per se, into that realm yet. And what is mankind doing in this realm? Everything they can do. Everything they can do to be a king over somebody else. Right? The spirit of domination. Leviathan. Correct? Leviathan. There are certain things in your life that you've had to contend with. All these things we must address, get over, and move on. We have some serious things we're going to have to contend with. Number one, last night I began a conversation, and we were talking about the fallen angels, and most people believe they come from out there. In the heavens, listen, that God's creation is vast. But there are some facts about what's right here on this earth that God does protect you from. They can't touch you or anything else. And, and, but, but listen to me. Good and evil is not the same as an angel having good and evil. It's not the same. Our good and evil is motivated by a lot of motivation. Right? It is. A, a lot of motivation, imagination, of the human condition. But to them, it doesn't work that way. It works differently. These fallen angels are creeping their way back into the earth by many means. And they are doing it whether you believe it or not. When, when the Antichrist rises, do you really think he's going to rise on his own? And there are a lot of unseen things that have taken place too. Right? There's been a great compromise, deals made, deals broken. Things that no one could just say because, you know, it, it would sound nuts unless you have studied your Bible. Now, we'll tell you this. How many of you know that Moses was almost like Moses was very different than, his, than the rest of the people out there? Many people don't know that. I'll tell you something else. Noah was very different than people out there. I'll tell you something else. There are people that live right now that are very different from the rest of us. Hmm? Very different. So what's happening here? Changes in humanity to carry on, to carry on that dominant seed for the sake of populating or keeping God's people. They were given a certain gift and power and things bestowed upon them in their natural way of being that they may go forward in the Lord. Why did God disperse his people all over the face of the earth? I'm going to give you a different side of the Bible maybe you didn't see yet. The Father wanted, listen, he dispersed his people to the four quarters of the earth. He did. It says so in the Bible. Why did he do that? Well, see, now that's where deep study comes into play. You'd be shocked at some of the scriptures in the Bible. I'll tell you this. They were to have their DNA with other DNA out there. You didn't even know that, did you? That one person, no, that no individual, because the Hebrew DNA is a dominant uh, DNA on this earth. I hate to tell you that, but that's the truth. You see, it's broken up in these different 
things. That's why everybody says the first human scientists say this. I, you know, I don't trust them because they get paid by the government. And of course, that's, you know, in the government's, uh, uh, they're in the government's pocket. But they say that the first humans came from Africa. I do not believe in evolution. That's hogwash for me, nor carbon dating. That's greater hogwash. I don't believe in those things. I believe that they've been trying to hide history because it's very different than the garbage they have been teaching everybody else. And I believe they would look like fools if they did so. Right? That's what I believe. I do not believe the history they have sat there and given us. They have given us enough toilet paper. Right? It's ridiculous. Their history is toilet paper. And you know they're doing this as, as a form of propaganda and control, but control for what reason? I'll tell you this, Satan does not want to control anybody. He doesn't. He wants people to turn their face against the true living God, the one. That's what he wants to do, and, and, and many people have done so. Why would people fall away in the first place? He has taught everybody that persecution is such a bad thing. You say that word persecution, people say, oh, yeah, I don't want to go through that. Truth is, is because we are what? Starts with a W. We have become what? Starts with a W. Weak. The Lord said we become weak by these false doctrines. Like somehow, when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to go over the rainbow and end up in Crystal City. No, you're not. You're going to be trained and be qualified as a citizen of the kingdom of God and walk in his ways it's a full adoption of the kingdom of God not an adoption to get our way in the earth right not that but to be sober we're called to be sober because whether you believe it or not you're going to contend with things that are very sober and God help you if you're not sober hasn't the Lord given us a chance over all these years to get ourselves right he has what do you see happening out there in the world? I'm going to be a bit bold tonight. I don't mean to offend anybody. But there are some prophecies coming true. You guys know one of them. You know one of them about the stone steps. Don't pretend you know the ending. I know that, and I won't say anymore. But someone's going to be escorted down the stone steps. That's not the important part. The important part is that is a huge marker. And an end-time event that changes everything. And when you see it with your own eyes, and you see the police forces in the street, and they're handling this, then you know something of great magnitude is coming. I mean, coming quickly. Hmm. Most people have forgotten about the stone steps. Every time I see it, I can see it. And every time I see it, my heart kind of drops. It does. Every single time. There's no way I can convey the importance of that to me as it is to me, but it is a marker, right? Somebody is going to be escorted down the stone steps, and the place they walked down had columns in the front. They were escorted down the stone steps. There were poli black police vehicles, people in strange uniforms that they did not wear when I had the vision, but they wear, they're going to wear them. They're going to be all over the place. The streets are going to be full. It's not going to be good. And it looked like it happened very close to the time we are in now, in this era. Somebody's going to be escorted down the stone steps. Somebody asked me before, is that going to be Obama? The reason why I said no is because the person was not black, nor Hawaiian, or any other color, right? <laughs> Hope you guys are keeping up with current events. Because a brown cloud comes right after that. A brown toxic cloud. See, people aren't ready. People, and when they see this happen, then what? Then what? People will get a hold of this, probably remember me saying that, and then they will mess up the story changing it. They can't change anything. That's why I didn't say anything except for this. Somebody's going to be escorted down the stone steps. Somebody said, are they going to be arrested? Well, I can't tell you that. But they're going to be escorted down the stone steps, out of a place, escorted down the stone steps. And that will be the end of that. Folks, something is lining up. That's, uh, it's incredible, but you can't be blinded by your biases. You're going to have to decide once and for all, you're a citizen of the kingdom of God, and you stand for righteousness. Not the works of men, but righteousness. And if the works of men also be righteous, right, then, then, 
your support is great. But if their works are evil, do not support it. Pray for them and petition for them. Right? You pray and petition for them. You also have to know that we're in a time that we're going to face some serious persecution. Let me give an example of that and why I'm not afraid of persecution. Because a lot of people, um, they, they think they have faced persecution. Right? But the embarrassment is what people in this day and age can't really stand. It's the embarrassment. Right? Of, of, of sticking with a subject that nobody wants to hear. Let me give an example of that in Acts 23. Let me give an example of that in Acts 23 when, when Paul, they really wanted to get Paul. Right? Let me tell you what these folks did as they do today. I'm going to just show you how consistent the hearts of men are. I'm going to show you. You guys ready? Now, Acts 23, there was a bunch of people that said this. Because of Paul. Because of what he was saying. about the, He was saying things about Christ. He's preaching. Listen to what they said in verse 12, 23. And when it was day, a certain other Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And there were more than 40 which had made this conspiracy. Are you kidding? So what did they say here? They said they would neither eat nor drink until they have killed Paul. Do you know why? Do you know why? Anybody know why? Hmm? I'll tell you why. Go back up a little bit. I'm going to read this to you. This is 20 through 6. But when Paul perceived that one of the part were Sadducees and the other part Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, of the hope and resurrection of the dead. I am called in a question. And when he said, when he had uh, uh, so said, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and Sadducees. And the multitude was divided. Paul knew exactly what he was saying. It was a doctrinal argument. It was over doctrine, over the resurrection. See, it says, For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. It's the same age-old argument. My goodness. They're having it today. Here's what today is. Listen, the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit. What have the Sadducees become in this modern day and age? Anybody know? Hmm? Scientist. 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 It's the same thing. Scientist. And they get in heated debates. And it's dividing so many things, even in the body of Christ. In the body of Christ, somebody can read the Bible and still not believe in angels. They still don't believe in the resurrection and all these things. They don't. They stick with science. And they'll say, well, I have to prove it first. I have to have empirical evidence and data before I can believe anything. It's the same age-old document. And look what they're willing to do. They're willing to get together, band themselves together to absolutely kill somebody for what they believe in. It's the same age-old garbage. Can you see that comparison this day? Now, who's behind this? Who is behind this? Satan is behind this. Lucifer is behind this. He is the author of confusion. He sowed these seeds. He is the giver of knowledge. They call him the bearer of light. Satan did this. Directly he did this. Let me tell you something else that you may not know. How in the world can Satan beguile the fallen angels? How did that happen? I'll tell you why. Satan is a master at hiding. He even hides himself from the fallen angels. He has misled the angels that fell, and he didn't show himself. Now, there is a Leviathan among men, right? But he did the same thing to the angels, causing angels to conversate among themselves like they had the idea, when Lucifer is the one that planted the idea in them. Now, you have to understand something about the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm is great, it greatly deals with, the spirit deals with mindset. Okay, mindset. 
mindset. They go hand in hand. If you do a deep study on that, you're going to find out spirit and mindset, same thing. That's why it says we have to have the spirit of Christ. And then it goes back to say we have to have the mind of Christ. It also says in the Bible that a carnal mind is enmity against God. The carnal mind. Right? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How can you be in the spirit by the renewing of your mind? How can that take place? The Lord said for us to walk in the spirit, not to walk after those things of the flesh. But it also says we must be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Hmm? So, so in your mind, your thoughts and everything else, what is that? What is that? It's telling you something. It's telling you something. <clears throat> it's telling you something. So this guy is sneaky, right? He's very sneaky. And so he will often author subjects to cause contention within the body. I have seen people call people false prophets because of the end times. The people who argue about it don't even know the end times. They are living day to day, and they don't know about the end times. They know what they read. They have not been to the end times. I've not been to the end times, so why would I sit there and down you for what you believe in the end times, and I've not been there yet? Do you see how foolish that is? You see how foolish it is? And what are they really doing? They're doing this so they can be right. Mankind wants to be right. I don't want to be right. My Lord and Savior is right. That's enough for me. And if I say what he has already said, I find myself not in error. If I come up with something new, I'm no better than Satan. My, my. Boy, he's a sneaky somebody, and now the world has fallen prey to it. And they have no defense. The world has no defense against Lucifer. None. Zip, zero. They don't. If your family members are not in Christ, they have no defense against Satan. So they are utilized often. You're the one that's not. You're the one that has to be careful that you're not used of Satan. That residue of your family and everybody else getting your mindset. Right? That's why you don't dispute with them because you'll enter in to that area of Satan himself and you walk away with the bad feelings. You feel defeated and everything else. You're not meant to do that. You're meant to walk sober. To take captive your thoughts. You don't have to respond to everything. I know people right now, they can't stand Christ. But they like me as a person, but they can't stand Christ. But I know this for a fact, they don't even know Christ. Because if they knew him, they would love him. When a person says, well, I just I don't like that Bible stuff, what they don't know anything about it. Because if they knew Christ, they would love him. Right? And if a human being so much as shows deep, deep, deep love, caring and compassion, and you know it's real, not the fake stuff, they have a calling upon their life. Jesus has lit or lights every man that comes into the world. That's what he does. But there are a lot of sneaky things happening. Oh, so many sneaky things happening. They are hiding the fallen angels, is what they're doing, because they messed up. They were tricked. Yeah, they were tricked. They're hiding the dealings of the fallen angels, and this is why they have secret ceremonies. But the symbols of the fallen angels are everywhere, including the eagle. The eagle. No wonder God said, Thou shalt not make thyself any engraven image of anything. Or any likeness in the heavens above, in the earth, or beneath the earth, I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. His jealousy is not like our jealousy. That means he takes notice, and he's not pleased with it. He will visit the iniquities upon the fathers unto their children, to the third and fourth generation of them that hate him, and show mercy to the thousands of them that love him and keep his commandments. He absolutely will. But these engraven images are inspired by whom? If God said, don't, have, don't make yourself any engraven image, then who inspired making engraven images? Who did that? That's, that's, that's so easy to see. And we have become what? A land of idols. Are we not mad about our idols? We are. The world is. Sound familiar? They're mad about their idols. God said that to a certain group of people in the Bible, of which all nations have the characteristics. We can't see simple things. We can't. 
How many people know what the two uh, in Israel, right? You know where the Dead Sea is, right? You guys know where the Dead Sea? Anybody been to the Dead Sea? It's dead. You guys know that? The Dead Sea is, it's dead. It is dead. But then you go to, you, you go to, um, when you're in Israel, you go to uh, the Sea of Galilee, right? Anybody ever been there? Hmm? Anybody? The, the, the further away you get from the, from the uh, Dead Sea, there's a sea full of life. I teeming with all sorts of everything. Pouring right down into the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea, you know why the Dead Sea is dead and full of salt and everything? It does not move. It takes in. It takes in from the waters teeming with life and they're stagnant right there in the Dead Sea. Stagnant. You know why I mention that? Listen to me. Satan desires that we be stagnant. How do you get somebody not to move left, right, forward, or backward? I'll tell you how. You consume them. You consume them. So they stay in one spot. You make them busy going nowhere. That would be like me doing a lot of research. Think about this. Imagine me doing a lot of research for years. I'm not doing anything but research during that time. And then at the end of my research, I happen to be wrong. Well, I just wasted all those years, didn't I? And who would inspire such foolishness in mankind? But he's doing it today. He's doing it today. He has sent people probing and digging into everything. Why do you think the Internet is, is being kept alive? It keeps people stagnant. They won't move. They won't grow. They won't. It has become a familiar place, an addiction, an entirely new environment that people choose over this realm of reality. But they're not doing anything, right? This has become a digital, a digital social experiment. It really has. And people research things so there's so many years in their life and they have done nothing for Christ. They but they've done everything for themselves. Isn't that funny? Who has a mind? I, you, you, Satan is so sneaky. He gets people to do these things and then folks can't see it and they begin to defend the work and everything else. But they're not doing any of the works of God. So Christ, the works of Christ become foreign to them until they get to the point of falling away, until they get to the point and they say, well, None of that boring doctrine does anything for me. I have spent my life in this area, and that is what I want to pursue. Right? Can you imagine if the Lord, if, if the Lord came up and asked you, but you didn't know it was the Lord. You didn't know it was him, and he said, will you come with me now? And you'd look at the person and say, no, I'm not going with you. I don't even know who you are. You, most people would barely take notice. Why? Because we're so fixated, so fixated on skepticism, on seeing the facts about something before we make a decision. We want people to prove it to us so that we can feel comfortable with it. We have to find all the information on something just so we have the information to discuss with somebody else. In other words, we have taken pleasure in discussing something with somebody else, not necessarily finding truth, but to have a discussion about stuff. Just stuff. <clears throat> How many people did you guys talk to in the course of a week? What did you talk about? Because whatever you talked about is part of your life and what you've been doing. Right? But let me ask you this. How many people went to a poor person and kneeled down or bent down or stopped and told them, hey, Christ loves you? See, the, 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 the thing is this. People don't really do that anymore. They don't. You know why? Because it's not socially acceptable. It's dangerous, they say. You don't know who the person is, right? So what is that telling you? It's telling you this. Many people will not be guided by the Spirit. 
They will resist the Spirit unless they themselves have understanding. Thus, they can't be obedient. Obedience is not understanding the intimacies of what you're doing, but to simply say yes. And most people say, well, I, I don't know if that was the Lord or not. Uh-oh, then you have a problem. If you don't know if it was the Lord or not, then you have a problem. That means you don't know the simple language of the Lord in your life. You have not, you have not reflected on your life enough. We have to get these things down pat. <clears throat> now, again, last night we talked about, you know who, Leviathan. He lost a dodo. He's a dodo. He's also possessed with one of the three unclean spirits, which, by the way, have a name. The three unclean spirits have a name. Why are there always three, and they look like frogs? Why are there always three? Does anybody know? Everything is in threes. Have you noticed that? Why? Why? People say there's, you know, three unclean spirits. Three this, three that. Somebody says counterfeit, right? No. No, it's not counterfeit. Nope. Nope. Guess what it is? It's a law of the Father. A three ring is not easily broken. That means two is, and one certainly is. Anybody know that? Hmm? That's a common law of the Father. Just like reaping and sowing is a common law of the Father. Hmm? Three ring, or, or three strand cord in some translations, right? Three fold cord, three strand cord is not easily broken. That means a two is, or one is. A five is too many, overdoing it. So then you see many things in threes. Now, what has happened is these secret societies picked up on that, and they work by strength. How many people know what the triangle with the eyeball is? A lot of people say, that's the Illuminati. No, it's not the Illuminati. It's not them. <laughs> it's not. It was a prophecy. You may not know this. That was a prophecy from a long time ago that's established now today with the Internet. In fact, lots of people have been driven by other types of prophecies, which is called knowledge. Some of these folks pick up these ancient doctrines, listen, and here's what they say. You see, one of the prophecies said that you can never have a kingship unless you can see all. And in order to see all, in order to see all, it must sit above all man-made things and permeate all man-made things, and then you can see all. What was he talking about? In that old, old, old prophecy. The Internet. Do you not know that uh, there's a story about the Internet? One of the primary reasons for the Internet was a compliment the NSA. It not only was it CERN, some of the theories, some of the problems worked out were with CERN, but it was for the NSA and the CIA long, long time ago. Right? Because they found out something maybe you didn't. See, while you've been searching for the Lord and trying to believe prophecy, they've had proof. They've had proof. They've had proof, and we've been trying to believe, and they absolutely believe. They had proof we didn't. Because we are to believe by faith, but they've been presented with things. See, they dig up all the good stuff. They dug it all up. That's why they blocked off certain parts of the Grand Canyons and they dig out stuff from rocks and this, that, and the other. They're reading it and they're putting it into action. Not knowing any better. They're serving the wrong side. Everything they're doing. In fact, in Revelation, it tells you the whole story. The entire story about those, those three unclean spirits. It tells you the whole purpose of of those guys, and why Satan is possessed, and why one was in the mouth of the prophet, and why one was in the mouth of the, of the uh, uh, beast. Listen, it says this, 13, Revelation 16, 13, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits, plural, of devils, plural, working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth, 
and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. In other words, these things are going out by way of signs, inspiration, whatever means necessary. And they're culminating by introducing inspiration in man's mind to eventually end up in one spot. Here's how that works. Mankind has created a political disaster system, is what they did. This political system does not work. It has never worked, and it won't work. And so because people believe it can work, they fight against one another, because when it doesn't work, they say, well, it's their fault, or it's their fault, or we must get rid of them first, because they threaten it, or it's their fault. And so while they're doing this, war is introduced, right? Because somebody is going to believe their way is higher than another. See, the truth is, if you don't have God's system, the systems dispute one to another always. There will never be peace. Not ever. There can never be peace. Because the system is made by man, inspired by these three unclean spirits. Weapons they build, don't they? They get smart, real smart intellectual about things they have created themselves and inspiration given from only the Lord knows what. But to do what? To finally come to the conclusion that the Middle East has to be changed to make a difference in the world. Right? It is not America that has to be changed to make a difference in the world. It's not Russia either. It's the Middle East. The Middle East always draws everybody down into itself. I find that that is so funny. The major wars began in the Middle East, and the Lord said there would be unrest in those places until he returns. Wars and desolations are determined until the end. Right? There's no peace there. There's no peace. These three unclean spirits, one, they look like frogs. What do frogs have? If you look like a frog, right? Now, this is John describing these things. They look like frogs. Yeah, kind of like what Sparkles put up there. Frogs. Frogs have big eyes, don't they? Now, just stay with me. Am I right or wrong? Do, do frogs have big eyes? It didn't say they were frogs. It said they look like frogs. Frogs are known for their big eyes. Hmm? That's all you have to... Listen, there are certain things in this world that have been put right in your face. Are they real? Yep. They are. They're of the angelic host. They have been cast out of eternity, therefore they are made what? See, it's a difference between, listen to me, here's a difference. This is where people get confused, because a lot of people say, well, demons are just, you know, the disembodied spirits of the fallen angels. No, they're not the disembodied spirits of the fallen angels. Because angels don't die. So, eh, that's wrong. Throw that out. Angels do not die. They are made eternal. They don't die. Right? The, the evil spirits in the earth are the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim, who are the children of the fallen. The Nephilim are the children of the fallen. Now, in the King James Version of the Bible, that word was not originally Nephilim. It wasn't. But that's not important. The important part is, these evil spirits known among men are the disembodied spirits of the children of the fallen angels. But the fallen angels, there are some that are bound, and they will never ever come up. They'll be loosed in the judgment time. Some that are bound, but the one-third fell to earth at the cross with Satan. They were cast to earth cast to earth. If you're cast to earth, if you're cast out of heaven and have to come to earth, what are you? That means you now have a time limit. They were kicked out of eternity. If you're booted out of eternity, you're all messed up. You don't have the same form you had in the beginning, nor the same powers you had in the beginning. The only power that they truly have is suggestion. The power to hide. The power to get into men's heads. And to amplify their pride. 
and prejudice and all these other traits of the flesh. But they're here. Not out there. They are here. Out there in space is ridiculous to know about. Why would someone, and I tell you, mankind has gone further than you think. Even the Bible says so. Though they have gone into the heavens, I'll pull them down. What do you mean? It's in that, though they have gone into the heavens, I'll pull them down. People can't even, they, they read these scriptures. They don't take them to heart because they say, well, what they're, they're famous for saying this. What they were trying to say was, no, no, I'm sorry, because it was stated in two other places. Hmm? You see? The world of mankind. Good thing your children are the most high. Very good thing. Your children are the most high. So now, these fallen angels, the ones that follow Mount Hermon, are bound. But when Satan was cast out of heaven at the cross, one third of the angels came with him, the rest that were left over. We don't know what that number is, but we do know this. They serve Lucifer. They're loyal to Lucifer, right? As soon as Israel became a nation again, that's where all this weird stuff started happening. At the same time, 1947, the weird stuff started being notable. At the same time, Israel, right, the United Nations got together and they declared that Israel was a nation again. That's when all the weird stuff started happening. And right before that, just like it says in the Bible, we'll get to this maybe later, Hitler tried to destroy the Jews, didn't he? He tried to kill them all, but they were dispersed all throughout the world. Huh? Dispersed. All throughout the world. Satan tried to kill them. And they were dispersed all throughout the world. When they came back from different parts of the world, that's when all the agendas of all nations changed. See, after World War II, right? Many churches went up people were happy again yeah we had crime and this that and the other but guess what there were a lot of blessings over people do you know why because after all that time in war they actually looked at one another and said we shouldn't be fighting we should be thankful that's what they were saying we shouldn't be fighting we should be thankful right so then there was a type of peace in a lot of nations because of that until we became spoiled. Because after World War II, do you know what happened? Hmm? Here's what happened. Mankind began to build things that bolster your flesh and your pride. They began to focus on entertainment. They began to focus on toys. As they did this, the church was cut off track by money. When they were caught off track by money, procedures were invented to capitalize. It, it, the church became a corporation. Is what happened. Because of money. The money was so good. People were making money. They came back from World War II. They were actually honest. They looked at their brother and their sister. And they said, I am thankful for you. Right? The, the, all that evil and, 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 and all this stuff had seemingly left for a while. People were tired of death and carnage and all this, that, and the other. Shortly after that, entertainment came in. Technology came in to make better entertainment. Most of the money was spent in entertainment on war machines just, just a little bit until, you know, the other wars broke out. And then it all started going downhill when the church was caught off guard with money. That's when everything went downhill. When the church moved into a corporate type of conspiracy to make money, a church turning into a corporation, surviving for the sake of money, doing what they do for the sake of money, when they became hirelings, that's what a hireling is. A hireling does what he does for the sake of money. So when they became hirelings, the world began to fall apart. And when that happened, everything started breaking out. The war machine amped up again. But this time, people were sneaky. And the onslaught of the Jews, or the Hebrew gene, uh, uh, gene line, 
was different. It was very different. Because people got wise to prejudice, and that was so distasteful, right? The plan was changed. They never gave up. They're still doing it. They never gave up. And so now what do you have? What do you have? What do you have? So you have the governments of the world who know more than you do making deals with fallen angels. See, that's even hard for you to believe, isn't it? You read about the fallen angels. You read about the angels. But for some reason, most Christians don't believe they're there. It's the strangest thing. Automatically, when I just said that statement, that your governments are making deals with the fallen angels, people say, I don't believe it. That just pops up in you. Now, you know you felt it out there. Don't try to act like you didn't. I can almost hear it with my ears. It was an instant back off, oh, elbows crossed. No, I don't believe it. See, your flesh can, doesn't want to take that in. You don't want to believe that. That's too weird. It is not weird. Who's planting the idea in people's heads that the Bible is weird? You see, your flesh says, no, 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 that can't be. It doesn't make sense to your flesh. It's probably why I like it so much. I like things that don't make sense to the flesh. I also like things that make men back down like good thunderstorms and bad lightning. People start ducking. They'll get quiet and everything else, and I absolutely love it. Mankind is reminded that God's simple things can destroy them. I absolutely like it. It makes mankind shut up with all their talk. And I can sit back and just say, yes, you are Lord. A big loud crack, everybody starts ducking. I just love it. I love it. Because it reminds mankind that God is, he's in control. What he left, his residue, is still in control. Are you, are you kidding? His residue. What he set in motion is much more powerful than mankind. Hmm? What about a volcano? Let's see them stop one of those. What he has set in motion can destroy mankind. See, I like that. They can't do anything about that. They get too big for their pants. And they're going to get a warning shot over the bow. That's why I like storms, by the way. I do. I know that people die in storms and things of that nature. But see, I believe differently than most folks. Here's what I believe. There is no one that's going to die in this world unless Jesus says... That person's going to die. And you don't know why they died. You don't know if they died because of evil or good. Maybe it was their time. That is the business of Christ. Life and death is not my business, yours either. That's in the Father's hands. So I don't look at death like everybody else, not even my own death. I don't worry about me dying or living. It does not move me nor scare me. And I understand it when other people go, it was approved by the Most High. By the way, that's his business. Huh? His business. So I don't think of death. Most people say, well, I like storms because it kills people. Listen, the Lord has the time on you. You're not promised tomorrow. But the Father knows the promised time for you. He knows when your time is. You don't know when your time is. People walk around fearing death. You don't have control over it. Didn't the Lord say, did, did not Jesus say, I got to read this to you. Can I read this to you, Luke? Luke uh, let's go to Luke 12. Because people worry about things so much. Can we get some biblical context behind this? I'm going to go to Luke, uh, this spontaneous. I, I, I think it's in, somebody help me out. I think it's in, um, I'm going to find it here. I'm gonna, I found it. Okay. I didn't want to read it wrong. You guys ready for this? Listen, listen. The, Jesus says this. He says this. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat. Neither for the body what you shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they never sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls or birds? Right? And which of you, taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Hmm? I love that one. Luke 12, 26. Let me put it to you in common English terms. Can I do that? Hmm? If you can't do anything about the tiny situation, why are you taking thought 
of the bigger situations. Why would you take thought of something you have no power to change? Why would you worry about something you have no power to change? Unburden yourselves with the truth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Who's going to sit up and worry about something they cannot change? That would be like me. And I said, well, COT, my leg fell off. I'm worried to death. The other one might fall off. I can't do anything about that if my leg falls off. Are you kidding? I can't do anything. What am I going to do? Why would I worry about the other leg falling off? That would be dumb. How about if I looked into the heavens and I saw a bird trying to flap with one wing and I was so worried I started crying, oh, the bird has one wing. But he's flying off in the distance. I can't do anything about that bird with one wing. You can't either. So why waste an entire day's time on something you can't change? Some of you, some of you out there, your house needs to be repaired. But you're not a carpenter. You can't set an appointment right now to get somebody to get out and do it. But you're biting all your fingernails off because you got two shingles missing. And you're worried that the rest are going to blow off. Why are you doing that? You have no power to get up there yourself and put two shingles up there. You have no power over that. You know what the Lord is saying? Listen, i got to tell you this. Everything Jesus told us to do is for a reason. Now, he says, he says, you're not, if you're not able to do that thing which is least, why are you taking thought for the rest of it? Hmm? If you can't do anything about the two shingles, why are you thinking about the rest of the shingles blowing off? What is he saying there? Now, if you obey him, does he not work on your behalf? Yes, he does. He works on your behalf. So then, isn't worry? Now, he's telling you, take no thought. Why are you taking thought for the rest? He gave a command. You know what? He gave you something. He gave you something. He said, life is more than meat and the body is more than raiment. He told you. You want to be obedient to him, then I'll tell you what. Take no thought for your life. That's what he told you. He said, take no thought for your life. Luke 12, 22. Take no thought for your life. What you shall eat, neither for the body. What you shall put on. He told you not to take thought of your life in regards to what you're going to eat. Or what you're going to put on. Now why did he tell you that? He, that's a command. Every time Jesus says. That you take no thought of something. Or he says walk in the spirit. Those are commands. So when you don't do it. You're in disobedience. And you pay the price. Because if you take thought of your life. In that way. You're going to get old very fast. You're not going to be free. You're going to be bound by that thought. You've got to get rid of it. Because then you begin to work on Satan's territory. And come to find out, everything Jesus commanded us to do is to walk above Lucifer. So that when we don't do it, when we're in disobedience, we walk below Lucifer under his command. Who's your prince? Lucifer? Or the prince of peace? Jesus of Nazareth? You see, you're choosing. You're choosing there. And if you take thought for your life, if you take, you're just saying no to Christ, and you're going to do it Satan's way. Satan in the world is the one that says take thought of your life. Doesn't, doesn't, huh? Isn't that what the world teaches you? Let me tell you how sneaky Lucifer is and his fallen angels. They're cast to earth. They've been showing up all the time to all these people. People call them ETs. They're not ETs. They're disembodied spirits and some are flesh and blood, right? The disembodied spirits are the children of the Nephilim. They were given a count of 500 years to live and after they died, their spirits went on. Mankind has been working with new Nephilim that have been around for about four to 500 years. You don't believe that, do you? Too bad you're going to. Are they evil? No, they're not evil. What do they help mankind out with? War is what they help them out with. Dominance over humanity is what they help them out with. False promises. Telling them lies like they came from the future and things of that nature. Right? But what are the fallen angels doing? They're getting into your mind. They are the propaganda machine. They feed you all this garbage in the entertainment. You don't even know what the entertainment's been setting you up for the Antichrist all this time. Let me give you an example. Every time... If you go and look through a list of movies, what do you see? 
Alien this, alien that, alien this, alien that. Independence Day, right? All these things is what you see. Why are these aliens so brutal and everything else? Why? I'll tell you why, because that's not their nature. So that when they are introduced, you'll say, oh, that's it? And you'll readily accept them as part of your society. That's why. See, they have made them, the fallen angels, look like these massive, you know, gonna kill you and murder you type things. When that's not what they are, it's not, their, it's not the nature that's going to be presented to you. So they have programmed you to believe and to be repulsed by something you don't even know about. Now that's the sad part. You are repulsed by something you have never been acquainted with. I hope you've never been acquainted with them. Because if you have, the first thing you'll say is they look real stupid. That's what you'll say. They have, they look stupid. They have a cheap grin. They're stupid. Bug creatures is what they look like, but they're castaways, they're cast downs, right? They look pitiful. I'm telling you the truth. They look pitiful. And you know why they hide? Because they're mortal. Because if they showed up in your house, you smack them with a frying pan, you could damage them. They're mortal. They're not eternal anymore. That's why they rely upon technology, truth be told. See, I'm trying to tell you a true story so that you can be prepared not fall and faint like the rest of these folks. They can present themselves in many different forms, but they're mortal. And you can whack them over the head and they'll be dead. You see, they were kicked, cast out of existence. If you knew, if you were eternal before you were mortal, you would hide from everything that could kill you. That's why you don't run into Africa and sleep with lions, right? You're not going to do that. Why? You can die. No, we're mankind. We're the dominant species on this planet. But we're not going to go up against a lion because we could die. You don't go up against something that can kill you. You don't do that. Isn't that funny? People will go up against people, but they will not go in Africa and say, I'm going to go box a lion. Okay, you go ahead. I'm going to watch. No, I take that back. I'm not going to watch. It was nice knowing you. Right? These things are the same way. They are inherent liars. And the truth is spilling out all around you. It is. All around you. They have lost a lot. Why would they have technology? This is the funniest thing for people who believe the E.T. story. Now, you mean to tell me, if you were so advanced, why would you come here and we're all messed up? Why would you come to a place where you can get shot out of the air, sneak around at nighttime, take a person here or there, collect DNA, leave them there, Tell a bunch of lies and false stories, appearing in ships and light bulbs and little little orbs and everything else to get somebody's interest, only to never show yourself. What in the world is all this stuff about? They are trying to seduce you. They have the same ways as the one they serve. Lucifer, who is the great deceiver, the beguiler. He beguiles. He deceives. He's a liar. And he's a murderer. He's always a murderer. He will kill you as soon as he looks at you. He wants you dead. So all this garbage in the world about saving your flesh is garbage. Because Jesus tells us, take no thought for your life. Uh-oh. See, that's contradictory. So who's teaching people this? People say, well, you need to do this so you can live longer. Isn't that what people say? And Jesus just told us, take no thought for your life. Who's right, who's wrong? Are you starting to see the difference? How many times do you hear people say, yes, you want to live a long time, you got to do this and you got to do that. Right? Eat this cinnamon stick. It'll help your heart pump faster. You'll be healthy and can do all this stuff. No, the hand of Christ can change every cell in your body. It can quicken you from the feet up. It is instant healing. But mankind is interested in the teachings of dodos, these three unclean spirits. I don't mean to defame them. Lord, forgive me, because we're not supposed to do that. When Michael and Satan disputed over the body of Moses, Michael dares not bring accusation against Satan, but only said, the Lord rebuke thee. Right? So, Lord, forgive me for calling them the names I did. 
That is not the Father's way. It really isn't. It really isn't. But what I'm telling you is that they're teaching people lies in abominable ways is what they're doing. They're teaching people these abominable ways, and people accept them, and they call it their own, and they become prideful behind the works they didn't invent. They're being inspired by little sneaky things that hide behind corners and come in big lights to try to impress a person, to get into that person. They will show themselves as these givers of light, only that the person will say, please, I want to see you again, and boom, there it is. They say, hey, send a couple of the sons to go inhabit that individual. That's called possession. Because every time you want to see one of them, you can invite demons into your life, which end up occupying in your mind. My goodness. Forget a Ouija board. They got all the Christians focused on Ouija boards. Like that's the worst thing in the world. I'm telling you, people are doing far worse. They're saying, I want to see E.T. Let's do some research on them. Let's go find out this. And when they do this, they're opening up portals unto themselves. What's worse? You know a person is possessed? Or that a person be possessed and you don't know it? It's when a person is possessed and you don't know it. That's worse. If you can see something, you'll pray for it. If you can't see something, you're not going to pray for it. And that's happening all around the world, like sleepers. There are many people right now, and this is a serious issue. Listen to me, I'll say that one more time. There are many people right now who are possessed. They are possessed. And because you don't recognize it, you won't do anything about it. People are still looking for the obvious thing. They've changed their tactics. In this world that they live in, it is, it, it is socially acceptable to exercise flesh. That's why people can't see demonic activity anymore. If we were a moral generation, right? And it was not acceptable for somebody to go out into the street with a bikini, well, then we'd know something is wrong with that person. Correct? Correct? But when we lose our morals, everybody can walk outside in a bikini. And it's no big deal. So what I'm telling you is that the corruptors are in people right now. We just, we can't recognize them because it is socially acceptable. And when you know what the laws are taking up for them. Do you really think that the laws that are being put into the world are for the sake of mankind? No, they are not. They are for the sake of the children of the fallen because here's one thing you don't know these twisted fallen angels love their children they accommodate the world for their sakes and they're corrupting mankind on the way mankind is nothing more than a host for those disembodied spirits those spirits cannot live again they're twice dead they can't live again unless they possessed a human being, if they possess a human being, they can live again. Do you see what's happening? More and more every day, people are being taken over. And, and people, we are not noticing. Until we get our feelings hurt. Why? Because these things, instead of foaming at the mouth, instead of doing that, they are perpetuating entertainment. Pornography. They are the corporate owners behind things like that to corrupt all men. They've hidden in a society that accepts them. They have pushed agendas. They have. And because it is socially acceptable, guess what? We don't take note of it. You know what we do? The dumb thing. Oh, man, we say that, that guy right there, he, they need to fire him. No, stop looking at the guy. It's what is within the guy. That's doing the thing. And the Lord said, you don't war against flesh and blood. Well, that's in the Bible. Given by the Holy Ghost, you don't war against the flesh. That was given by the Holy Spirit. How true is that? But what do we do? We point out the person. And not the, not the, not the spirit behind the person. Therefore, we are doing nothing. We're stagnant. And guess what happens to something stagnant? It begins to die. You want to know the real source of certain things in your life? You're, we're stagnant. 
We're trying to do what we want to do, not what we have been sent here to do. And Satan is just clapping his hands. You don't want to be confronted by him. So you do everything you can that you not be confronted. Only those who are in the will of God are confronted by Satan. Those outside the will of God will not even see Satan. Satan opposes God's word. If you carry God's word, he's going to oppose you. If you do not carry God's word, you're not going to be opposed by Lucifer. Those of you who carry the word of God, your family members will come up to you, and many people will come up to you and say, why do you believe in that stuff? Because they're opposing God's word in your life. I'm not talking about you believing in E.T. and all this, that they, not even the end of the world things. I'm speaking of Christ. They believe in Christ a different way than you do. Many people right now believe there are many different ways to Christ wrong. All this stuff is growing in the earth. It's growing in the earth. My, my. If you have the word of God within you, you're going to be accused. He is the accuser of the brethren, not the accuser of his own. So if you are accused of doing something you have not done, and you carry God's word, then you do so correctly. If Satan has not accused you, or come against you, or spoken evil of you, you're not carrying God's word. He will always oppose God's word. But guess what? Some of these little fallen angels have taught people to stay away from all persecution. In order to have a good life, you must do this, that, and the other. And then people go for that. And they're not carrying the word of God. They're carrying a simple story, a book. It is not the living word of God to them anymore. It just becomes a book. Ah. You telling me mankind is not, this is not the apostate generation? It's more apostate than you know. People have it backward. They're looking for all this other stuff when God was firm and clear in what he said. They're teaching you how to be a different type of victorious. Having your cake and eating it too. Well, guess what? They can have that. Your way will fail upon those who truly believe in Christ. And they also have no power over the ones who abide in Christ. And they're trying to get you not to abide in him. And then they will have power over you. But too bad for them. My abode is with the Lord. And it does not matter how many times I stumble. I have chosen my abode to be with the Lord. I can stumble a thousand times in this day, and my Lord and Savior will forgive me a thousand times in this day. But I will make my abode in Christ. I will live within him. That is why there is now... Therefore, no condemnation to them that believe, because a way has been made for us to get up and go back and live in Christ. You see, how can he do anything to a person like me? I'm too stupid to fall for his ways. I'm sold out to Christ. No matter what you say, anybody else says. It is my personal relationship with Christ. It is not a public relationship. I will make my abode in Christ. I will learn of him and follow him with everything that I am. I will give myself no excuses, nor will I excuse the flesh. But I will repent, and I will do so until I am clean, clean, clean. He will oppose God's word. He will also oppose you if you carry God's word. And so in that respect, you say, Jimmy, crack corn, and I don't care. Make your abode in Christ Jesus. You are predestined to be in him. He's a sneaky character, but his lies can be known by those who make their abode in Christ. What does the Bible say about that great number that no man can number? They washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. They did. Who washed their robes? God didn't do it. Jesus did not do it. 
They did it. They washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. That implies that they never gave up and they kept abiding in Christ even when they fell out a couple times. They could trip and stumble and get back in there and say, Oh, no, 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 I'm living in Christ. I don't care if it looks like I'm about to die or be jailed or everything is going to be stripped away from me. My boat is in Christ. It doesn't matter. It looks bad in everybody else's eyes. My abode is in Christ. See, that's when you know a person has made their abode in Christ for the sake of truth. They're concerned. Those folks are concerned about the kingdom. They are also concerned about being an ambassador to Christ. They don't want to present Christ in error to anybody. Therefore, they lean not unto their own understanding. None of us want to represent the Lord in the wrong way, but here's what happens. Here comes Lucifer challenging you. And he challenges you in your intellect. In fact, whatever you've had an issue with, you've heard it all your life. Somebody could have said, well, you're not smart enough to do so and so. So when you become a Christian, somebody's going to walk into your life and say, well, I don't think you're smart enough to really understand what Jesus was saying. And then that triggers you off. What do you mean I'm not smart enough? I've studied this Bible for 14 years. Now you're, now you're just finished. You just fell out of Christ. Now you're giving your resume again. When a Christian gives his or her resume, I'm telling you they have been moved by the flesh. And Satan is the opposer and the accuser of those who carry the word. So all you have to do is know these things. See, that's why you have to meditate upon the word day and night. You'll begin to see the situations in your life. And you say, ooh, I'm not falling for that again because that was me. And he did. He made me. There was a person in my life that would come up, right? And I would just say, Lord, please just help me hold it together. I'm just telling you the truth. This one person would come up in my life. I didn't want to see this person. Because when this person came around, it was almost like I couldn't control myself. Right? I, I couldn't hold my mouth over my hand long enough. I had no patience with the individual. I didn't want to hear a word the individual had to say. And this person will walk up. I'd be having a beautiful day. You hear the name of the individual and your stomach drops to the ground. You say, oh boy, here they come. So you get yourself prepared. The person comes up and sure enough, they're talking at 10,000 miles per hour and then they hit one of those nerves in there, right? And you're trying not to react. And then they say a falsehood and tap another nerve. Because they said the falsehood, now you can't help yourself. You're boiling over for a type of defense. And you open your mouth and you say, I never, or something like that, right? No, that's not how it was. And you just lost. And the person goes away skipping. They're fine. You're the one sitting there like I failed. I opened my big mouth. I failed. Lord, I failed. And you feel like you had just really failed. Because you would not hold your tongue. Well, after a while, the Lord gave me something about that. I meditated upon that and said, Lord, how does one win in this? I just began to think. It's not that he talked to me audibly. I'm sitting there thinking. I said, you know... I'm not even expressing love to this individual, nor is a thought of love coming into my mind when I see the individual. I'm so taken by their accusations, I respond out of the accusations. But I'm missing the entire truth. The person is crying. They keep coming to me because they're crying to me. But they don't know how to communicate what's in them. And so it comes out with accusations. They're crying. And that's when it hit me. You must look upon others with the eyes of love and love only. You must forgive them and look upon them with the eyes of love. Because that's how the Father looks upon us. He forgave us and looks upon us with the eyes of love. I'm sure that we have said many things and did many things that he could have really accused us for. But we have to look upon an individual in truth with the eyes of love. Now when I did that, the individual came back. It was a test now. Now I'm armed up and ready with the truth. And sure enough, when I saw the person, I began to think of the person crying and not knowing how to communicate what they're communicating. 
And my entire heart changed. I listened to everything they said, and I was not moved in the flesh, but I was moved with compassion. I began to hear something totally different. My hearing changed. I didn't hear offenses. I didn't hear accusations or any of those things. I heard a person crying out. And what they were really saying was, they don't understand why things are happening to them. And they're at the end of the rope, and they don't know what to do, and nobody will listen to them. That's what I began to hear. All the other stuff was simply a cry. But they were crying out for their very lives. That's what happens when you look with the eyes of love upon your brother and your sister. You begin to really hear what they're saying. You really hear what they're saying. My, my, small things like that. And in my mind, the time before that time, all these worldly ways and situations were in my mind. I had to cast those away. I had to cast them away. Because when you meet a person, if you're not operating in the truth of the Lord, you begin to act out what you have already seen somebody else do. Some, something you saw on television or something. You begin to mimic another's behavior. You're out of control yourselves. But when you look upon somebody with the eyes of love, you begin to understand the truth, and the Lord can use you in that respect. And when you know it, it changes the person's... It is so effective when you do that, and it's so true, that the person may try a couple times, and then they totally just relent. Because you keep looking upon the person with the eyes of love, and Satan, listen, if that person ever meant you harm, Satan will have that person go somewhere else because now they can't come to you because you'll tear down what he has invested in them. It's so funny. When you look upon somebody with the eyes of love and you really don't care about anything else but love and this person having the help from the Lord upon their lives, you're going to start praying. While that person's talking, you're going to listen to everything they say and your heart's going to be petitioning as they're talking. Well, if that person is a pure agent of Satan, that person is going to turn around and run. Because you're praying internally. And you're looking upon the person with the eyes of love. But that changed everything. What I'm saying is this. There's some sneaky ways darkness has. In a lot of cases, we harbor a type of darkness which causes us to be blind to many causes to many things. Our ambassadorship comes from Christ. And he told us everything to do. Right? It requires us to be obedient first. To be obedient first. If we listen to him, he'll guide your steps through all things. He really will. But we have to listen to him first. Right? You have to listen to him first. And when that takes place, my, my, he's right there with you. Because everything the Lord asked you to do, he's ready to give answer to you. Do you know that? Last night I told you guys that it was said that men ought pray always. That's because the Father is ready to give answer. Jesus says, take no thought of your life what you're going to eat or drink or wear, anything like that. That's because the Lord is ready to provide for you. If you obey the Lord, Things are there for you. Now, why would he say, take no thought of these things? Because he is the provider. And when you're, listen, he never does anything for anybody like that outside of obedience. So here's how it works. He told Adam and Eve, do not touch the tree of good and evil. The entire time they didn't touch it, guess what? They were blessed. Why? Because they walked in obedience. The entire time they didn't touch it. The entire time the tree was there and they never laid a finger on it, never ate of it, they were obedient and blessed. How many understand that? How many of you understand that? And that was just with the tree. Just with the tree. It, as long as they didn't touch the fruit of it, they were obedient. Well, I'll tell you this, in the New Testament, Jesus gave us so many things. You do one thing. And you're blessed and not cursed. See, when you're disobedient, you're cursed. When you're obedient, you're blessed. 
You can't be obedient to those things you don't know. And the Father will lead you to things in the New Testament that you can know. And if you are obedient to those things he has shown you, now you're getting somewhere. Now you're truly blessed and your life will change and turn around. I'm telling you an absolute 100% factual truth. <laughs> Some, that's why it's not good to pride yourself on how much you know in the Bible. Think about it. If somebody sits there and says, well, I know lots about the Bible, that means they're disobedient about a whole bunch. How cursed is that person? Because whatever we know, if we, are, if we abide in Christ in truth, we have to be obedient to him because the Lord said, if you're not obedient to me, don't call me Lord. Why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? That's what he said, point blank. That's, he said that point blank. So listen, now doesn't that change things that right there? What you know you have to be obedient to. Now remember this, Adam and Eve were only told that the day they eat of that tree, they're going to die. They didn't have a full explanation of that. So then you in a like manner, when the Lord tells you to do something, stop looking for the reasons. Whatever the Lord conveys initially should be enough to obey him initially. As you grow, you'll understand the deepness of it. But your servitude begins with obedience. That's what it begins with, obedience. And if you can't be obedient to the small things he's giving you, don't ever look for more, because you'll condemn yourself even the more. There is a clear, 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 clear walk with the Lord, and it is this. Those who are obedient to the word that the Lord gives you, they are his children. Those who are not obedient well, we're going to suffer a little bit because the Lord loves you. How many of you are tired of suffering? Now think back in your life and ask yourself this question. Have you been obedient to what the Lord has given you? He didn't give us these impossible things that we know. He gave us a little bit. But are we obedient in those things he's given us? Like the big one, take no thought of your life, which you're going to eat or drink or wear. Can you be obedient in that? Because if you do, the blessing of his provision will be over your life. See, I love that. He gave us something to obey for every blessing we're going to receive. He said men ought to pray always. And then he told us how to pray. Because he's ready to answer our prayer. And when we're obedient to that, he answers our prayers. He told us not to take thought of our life, what we're going to eat or drink or wear or anything else. Why? Because he stands ready to provide all things unto us. In obedience. Hmm? In obedience. My, my. See, Satan is so sneaky. He'll have you thinking in so many different dimensions, you'll forget that it truly is, like it says in the Old Testament, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. That's how God teaches. Never everything at once, but precept upon precept. When you obey in one thing, the Lord will grant to you another. And that's why he said, those who have a little, that little is going to be taken away. Those who have, more will be added to them. Why? Because in order to truly obtain these things in the Bible, you must utilize them and be obedient toward them. In other words, listen to the Lord. And we call him Lord all the time. And the truth is, do we really listen to everything he has told us? Honestly. Who can, because I can't even honestly say that. That's why I have lumps and bumps and everything else. But I can tell you this, everything I learn of him, I will fight to do. Better believe that one. See, I give no excuse to the flesh. None. And it begins with my flesh. I'm not talking about your flesh. I'm talking about my flesh. I'm not responsible for your flesh. You are. 
I'm talking about my flesh. I give no room for my flesh. It does not matter what I feel like. I love the Lord my God and my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So therefore, I desire to obey him. Period. And when you don't make excuses, he will bestow upon you riches of the kingdom. Which is something that money can never buy. And when you can be effective in somebody else's life, it's, that, is, that is the reward of rewards. To understand and to know that you truly assisted someone into the kingdom of the living God, and you did so by the word of the Lord, decent, with integrity, in obedience to the Lord and his way. Now you're an ambassador. And it's not that you feel proud of yourself. It's that you know the Lord is going to be pleased with you. But not so with the devil. He has confused many folks. And now he's marching. Because he's given power to rise. Satan is given power to rise. Hmm? My goodness. Folks, it's like, it's, it's, it's very simple. He's given us small things to be obedient in. Just be obedient in those small things he's given you. Right? But don't ever jump out there saying you know it all. Because all will be required of you. Don't, don't do that. He's given us enough to be obedient to. Something we can do. Something we're built to do. So you take that and be obedient in that thing and your whole, I'm telling you, your whole life will have true blessings. And a true blessing from above is without regret. It does not rust or anything else. Nobody can just take, snatch it away from you. And your life will be full of riches from the inside out, not from the outside in. See, I'm, some of you people in COT, you have money. But you also have great sorrow. Who wants who wants to have all their needs met and be sorrowful and in a dark place? That's why a lot of millionaires want to commit suicide. Even our president, Donald Trump, how many people are praying for him? Because he is stressed to the max. He is so stressed. And things are not going well. They just are not going well. I'm telling you, they're not going well. And what are the Christians doing? They're consumed in their own life. They can't look at anybody else. They can't do the work of the Lord because their lives are all messed up. The Christians who believe in Yahshua HaMashiach have the power to change the day because they are the ones the Father hears. But the question is, will they be obedient and pray for their leaders or will they continue to curse them? You cannot pray for Donald Trump and condemn Barack Obama. You cannot lift up Mike Pence and destroy Michael Flynn or Flynn. You can't do that. One will nullify the other. You can't do that. And Christians have done this too long and that's why there's such discord. Because we obey and disobey in the same breath, we have become judges and not children. But ladies and gentlemen, the proving grounds call the earth like a firing range. They will go hot. How many know how to obey? Now man, it is it's known that a person is proven only in times of distress. You're not going to prove, you're not going to find out who you actually are until you are distressed. The measure of an individual comes with high pressure. Great trouble. And a great trouble is coming which will finally define us. If you have the precepts now, you'll have understanding as the heat comes. And you won't fall for Lucifer. He has set the world up to receive him. 
he will present himself and people will say that's normal. They will have no discernment for the truth, but you do. You do. You do. Folks, hope you get yourselves ready. That heat pulse is moving fast and it's coming. I don't know what that's going to do. It is part of the trouble expected this year. Everybody's been given ample warning. The kingdoms of this world are in great disarray. Somebody's going to do something wrong. But pray for your leaders. Because it would be a shame if you didn't. And something horrific happened. But you knew you didn't pray. You didn't pray for your leaders. Pray that they find the Lord in their doings. Pray that the word of the Lord be established in their decisions. And continue to pray for your brothers and sisters. That the Lord show you what you can do to actually assist them. If all the brothers and sisters pray for one another, not one would be lacking in anything. Because the Lord said so. The Lord did. My, my. Folks, I want to say, yeah, where's Larry at, by the way? Is Larry around? We didn't even take a break. You guys let me talk all this time without taking a break. But I have to tell you, today has been a very, very trying day. But Satan has lost with us. He really has. He has lost with us. Leviathan is ineffective. But we have to keep our abode in Christ and in truth. Those things do look like frogs, silly frogs. But don't get so deep into what they look like and everything else. Believe me, there will come a time where you see all things. But rather devote your time to your abiding in Christ where you will be shown all things. See, the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth, not some truth, all truth. And of all things you need in your life, you need to see the truth. Right? Not imagination, but the truth. Every time we get upset in our lives, it's because we thought one thing would happen, but something else took place. That's nothing more than Lucifer and the devil deceiving folks. You don't have to be deceived another day. Lay down your barrier in view of your Lord. And say, Lord, here I am just like I am. Use me where I am. Here I am is what you need to say. No deal making. Just simply say, here I am. And what the Lord communicates to you through his word, you do those things that the Lord said to do. Be very careful to do those things the Lord said to do. Paul, by the way, in Acts 23, had to beg the pardon because he didn't know that one of those individuals was set above him, right? In other words, it was one of his leaders. Paul didn't know, and he, had, he quoted in Acts 23, basically, forgive me, it is in the law that we are to obey those appointed over us. Right? That was given by Christ. Paul had to beg the pardon. But wouldn't you know it when he conformed to that? They began to stand up for him. My, my. See, the completion of obedience is freedom for you. The completion of obedience is freedom for you. So long as you are obedient, you are blessed. And the prince of the air works in the children of disobedience. Who is Satan, the prince of the air, Satan. And he is decay and destruction, bad health and everything else. But it's time for the souls of all of us to be healed in truth. And if we've come a long way because we have discounted so many things we thought was true in the word, come to find out when you read it, it says something different. And it confirms with the spirit within. 
We, he almost got us in a world of imagination. But now we live a life of assurances. Assurances in Christ. It's a beautiful thing to see. And but, but believe me, he is lost. And his agents are mortal. That's why they rely upon technology. Uh, if they were so powerful, they wouldn't need technology. Nor would they need mankind. They would just do what they have to do themselves, and so would Lucifer. But the fact is, he cannot. Why work through mankind? I'll tell you why. You're untouchable to him. That's why. The only thing he can do is put suggestions in the mind of somebody else. That's it. But through the blood, you can cancel that. He has no power over you. He is defeated. He is a defeated foe on death row. He has no power over you. Nor do any demons have power over you. Nor does anything have power over you. You are joint heirs with Christ. Vessels of the word of the living God. And God will always watch over his word to perform it wherever it is. That's why miracles and signs and wonders follow the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ is the words of God. And God watches over his word to perform it. That's why. And you're appointed and called to be those vessels of the word. In different capacities, but carrying the same word. And God will watch over his word to perform it. But let your vessels be real vessels and true vessels. Let no unclean thing dwell within you. Clean your house up for occupation of the Most High. He desires to make his abode with you. But be obedient. And he said, if you do, Jesus said, if you do those things I commanded you, I and my Father will make our abode with you and will sup with you. That's what Jesus said. So get your vessels ready. Because we know he's been ready. He's been ready. Get your vessels ready. Sweep the floors. Clean the windows. Wipe down everything. Get it prepared for the king to make his abode right away and do the will of the living God according to his word and live based on truth, not imagination. Take captive your thoughts and cast down imaginations, but keep your eyes stayed upon the Lord. And remember, the next person you face, the very person you can't stand, they're crying. They're crying deeply inside. And all you have to do is love them. With a heart of love, it exposes all things. It shows you things you never saw before, and that love is God. God is love. You can't separate the two. You cannot do it. I want to say God bless everybody. Thank you, Pastor Scott, for today. I know it was late, you all. I know it was late. And I'm kind of wore out now, but that's okay. Just physically wore out. Tomorrow's Thursday, and uh, it is. And I'll probably be on tomorrow also. I actually was going to talk about one thing tonight. Kind of led to another direction. Thank you guys for last night. That was a whew, that was a close call. We're using the additional things that did come in for a couple of other families. So we're going to try and get everybody squared away as they come in. Okay. All right. We will. So thank you all for that. And God bless each and every one of you. Look out for me tomorrow. So I may be there. I'm not sure. I don't think Pastor uh, Paul will have a have anything going on tomorrow. At, uh, so we can do a regular uh, scheduled broadcast, Pastor Scott. So um, I'll let everybody know by the time, uh, by, by about 5 or 6 p.m., you'll know. You'll know by about 5 or 6. God bless each of you. Keep praying for one another. Keep each other lifted up. You guys are awesome. God bless each and every one of you.